Okay, so I'm going to restart this painting. I like this kind of eraser. It's a kneaded eraser because it doesn't damage the paper. Usually what I'll do is I'll draw in with a bit of a harder pencil line and then especially where there's a lots of whites I'll go in and just erase just so there's like a faint line just for my own use when I'm figuring out where to put what in the painting. You can even kind of blot at the pencil marks like this to get up the darkest of the marks but not disturb it too much so that you can't see what the heck you're doing. I'm going to get everything wet and I'm going to lay in the first wash. My cat is helping me. And behind the dog are some clouds so I can put those in too I guess. What you want to do usually, not always, but usually you want to put in the light things first. The sky is definitely one of the lightest components of this painting, so I'll get a little bit of cerulean, I think. Manganese can also do a really pretty job. Just real light washes. Now I can go over his ears with this because the brown of his ears is going to be a lot lighter. And you want to keep clouds light. Um, you want to keep clouds loose. So I'm just going in with some water here, even on those white areas, and just oh, that's a nice little sky, I think. And then I'm gonna go in and just gray down these areas a little bit. You can barely even tell that I'm putting anything here. Just getting rid of the lightest of the light paper. Getting some ultramarine blue with burnt sienna. Mostly ultramarine just to m mark these. It's almost too much water. I'm going to wring my brush out here and pick some of that off. I don't want it floating around too much. Um, right through here, the dog's mouth is pretty grayed out. And Just keep in mind it's easier to make a watercolor darker than lighter. So for those light areas you want to try to keep them as light as possible. And just keep layering. Unless you're really sure you want that area dark. Okay, now I'm going to go in with some burnt sienna and some of the lighter parts of this boy's coat. Really, I can just paint right over his eye here because his eye is going to be pretty dark. I always like my first few layers really soft. Helps set the tone for the rest of the painting. I'm going to go in here and lift out some with oak. Oh, my paintbrush just came apart. I'm just going to lift out a little bit here with a moist but pretty wrung out brush and just keep adding pigment. Try to work as fast as you can during the stage so you can get as much pigment on during this nice loose phase. Of course you can always let it dry and go back later and add more. But the more you can get done during this stage and get the tones right the first time around, the less you'll have to come back later and keep layering. And a lot of times the painting will look fresher if you can get as many tones right this first go around as you can. See, he's, his coat's pretty dark through here, so I went bam. You see how I just put that dark in, and now I'm gonna wet my brush and go around the edges and make sure that all blends.
because this is this is already kind of dried right here and that's not what I want so I'm just going to go in and re-wet and then I'll go in and refine this it's a really black darker area of his coat and then I'm going to go and get tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of black in my brush to keep the softness of his coat here but it's very black in this one area so I'm going to go ahead and drop that in but what I like is that my my paper is still moist enough that it will keep the edge of his fur right here between the sky and his fur soft so it will look pretty realistic And usually you're going for a lot of realism when you're doing a painting for someone else. Usually that's what they want. Not always. Sometimes they'll give you some artistic lessons, but unfortunately that's the rare case where you can just kind of play. You got to kind of keep it more realistic, which is fine. It's good practice to learn how to control your medium. Realism is a great tool to use to learn how to control your paint and then once you have that down you can go back in with your own vision in later paintings and really express yourself. And I'm going to go in with a drier brush with just a cream consistency paint in there. And there's lots of hints, just splashes of fur in through here, but I'll go in there later with a completely dry brush and hint at the fur through there. Rinsing my brush out, and I'm going to pick up, I think, some burnt sienna again. Maybe a little transparent yellow for this part of this coat because it is still a bit darker through here. Now this area is dry so I'll just go in and put in some fur texture and then go back in and soften it up. Now I'm going to test. This is still kind of moist so I can keep this nice and soft. This is really the perfect consistency. The um, moist paper right here. It'll let those edges be soft but the paint won't spread too much. So I can get just the right effect and this is just perfect. So I try to take advantage of that while I can. Now I'm going in with clear water to soften these edges a little bit more and blend this down. I'm gonna drop in some brown for his eyes. And then some thick black. He's got thick black eyeliner. So I'm going to take advantage of my moist paper, put those eyes in, and it's keeping it nice and soft. This will really have a nice effect when it dries. And you can clean it up a little bit after you're done if you want to lighten. If you find out after you drop it in that it's too dark after it dries, you can go in and soften this kind of thing, this kind of area. Go in later and refine it. But this is going to make a nice little start. And I'm going to go back in with some brown mixed with black because his eyes are much darker. Just drop that in there. And I'll go back in and refine some more. This is almost dry over there. So I'm going to let this dry at this point because if you start painting in, in paper that's almost dry, it'll start to cauliflower, of 